Thank you so much for giving up, giving your time today for us. Um, this is a lunch and learn, and you might notice you don't have your lunch yet. That happens at the end. There's actually a sign up sheet and a very small survey that we're going to ask you to fill out. And then you get to, um, I think you get to pick one of three choices and uh, you get your lunch coupon sent to you. So enjoy lunch on Microserve and telemetry. Um, I guess it's, I'll go right into my first slide. Yeah, introduce our speakers. Oh, just one thing. We're going to be kind of open-ended on um, keeping this going. Uh, for those of you to, that didn't hear my cry plea at the beginning, this is my first virtual event. I'm used to doing them in person. So I'm struggling along, but I've got a great marketing team that's backing me up and we'll just play it by ear and see how it goes. If you have questions, if you don't mind putting them into chat, and I told I have a, a moderator who will help us with that. And also at the end, we definitely have room for chat. This is not a long session. I really like to tell you that it's just enough to get you excited about digital signage, as much as Syl and I are excited about it. So our participants, thank you so much to the medical school at Stanford who have joined us to talk about their experience with digital signage. We have Justin Price, Senior Communications Technology Engineer. Wow, that's a title, Justin. He'll be doing a Q and or discussions with Max later. Max comes from Telementary TV. And of course, those of you who are BCNet customers, you've heard that term before. That is one of our partners here at Microserve um, that we supply of digital signage. And, oh, I'm already getting a note. There's a form at the end of the chat. Oh, what am I getting? Oh, that feedback. Yes, I talked about the survey, but you're calling it a form. It's at the end at the Q&A, is that right? Yes, Adina. Sorry, I didn't want to disturb your call. Oh, okay, no, that's fine. I'm kind of monitoring that too. Yeah, at the end. Okay. Um, so we've got Max, Dina, and Justin. We're going to be doing some of the talking, and then we have another slide. I'm going to introduce some folks that are very instrumental in this as well. Is Chris on the call? I can't see. I've got Chris Hillier. Oh, yeah, I'm here. Yep. Hello, Super. Everybody. Chris is our CEO of Telementary, and he um, is on the line uh, available to answer questions in that as well. Devin Keys, you BCNet members, I'm sure you know Devin. She works on with BCNet, and this is one of her portfolios of many. And I see, Devin, you have your camera on. Thank you. Do you want to wave your hand for those who are a lot of people showing? Excellent. And then we have Robert. Robert, I didn't test your name. Delviscio? Delviscio, yep, you got it. Delviscio, okay. Also from sunny California. Uh, Stanford School of Medicine as well, and he works with Justin there. Okay, and on to my next slide. Microserve. We always like to tell people who we are. Oh, there we go. To Microserve. We are everything IT. We are, um, I believe, one of the only IT companies that has such a strong AV practice, but there's not much we can't do. Manage portfolio, manage AV. We have many contracts under the BC Net shared uh, practice, shared procurement uh, portfolio today. We are in Alberta and BC primarily, but we do have customers right across Canada. Oh, I forgot Jim. Jim wasn't going to make it. So he, he's he's on the last slide. But I've got Jim Pashek with me. So I'm an AV specialist in BC. Jim Pashek is our AV specialist from Alberta. Thanks for waving, Jim. Sorry about that. I just saw you in the corner there. No okay, a little bit about our AV practice. And that's what Jim and I both support. And so we're AV specialists that are kind of in the background supporting your account managers. I say to customers, there's nothing that Microserve AV can't do. Uh, today, we have a very large Teams meeting room practice, and digital signage is one of our practices, though we'd like that to be even larger, because as I said, it's the exciting stuff. It's the communication and the wow factor when customers walk into your premises. And 
that was there we go our value proposition again just a little bit about microserve and who we are we have a really neat value proposition i love the right size we definitely match our customers. A lot of our customers at Microserve have been with us for years. I see Douglas College on the line. They've been with us for a lot of years. And that's just the way we are. We're able to scale for customers and size up and size down. So um, just a really neat company. And if you want to learn more, please reach out at the end. So I think I'm going to hand it off to Justin at this point. Or sorry, not to Justin, it's to Max. Oh, boo-boo, a boo-boo already. So Max, it, I'll pass it over to you and talk a little bit about telemetry. Thank you. Did Thank I you, Dina. Right? Nailed it. Thank you, Dina. Oh, good. Excellent. All right. So uh, yeah, thank you everyone for hopping on today. My name is Max. I'm a customer success manager here at Telemetry TV. And I just want to talk to you a little bit about us, who we are as a company, and what digital signage is and how digital signage software works. And then at that point, I'm going to have a conversation with Justin Price from Stanford about how they're using digital signage at uh, Stanford University uh, School of Medicine. Sorry. So first things first, we were founded in 2015. And we started off as a real-time dashboard for live metrics for companies. So they could show uh, live reports on their screens uh, on an internal basis. From there, we grew our scope to become a full cloud-based digital content management system. So shortly afterward, we adopted a system called NPS, which is Net Promoter Score, which was really useful in learning hard truths from our customers about was, what was and what wasn't working with our software. So as a result, our whole feature set is very much driven by the voice of the customer and their needs and wants from a content management system. So next slide there. Oh, perfect. So how can digital signage be used? It can be used in many different ways. It's one of those things like when you buy a new car and then you notice that same type of car everywhere, you'll notice digital signage everywhere. It can be used for obviously sharing content, ads, promotions, but it can be used for things like schedules, events, emergency alerts, wayfinding, and key information sharing at your universities or at your facilities. So one way that it's used by a lot of our customers, a lot of our clients is a for sharing information about events. And then also a cool feature that we have is called overrides. So if there's ever any emergency alerts, you can uh, queue automatic triggers. So all of your screens can have that safety information pop up right away to keep your users, your students, your visitors as safe as possible with that key information. So I'd say the real key to digital digital signage is the sharing of important information and communication to everyone in the premises who might need that information. So next, uh, perfect, way ahead of me. So how does digital signage work? So the way that our platform works is very simple. There's three different tiers. There is the cloud, there is our service, which is software that you can access either through a browser or through our app. And then there is a physical hardware device, which is attached to your screen. So you can create, organize, edit, and share content from the cloud onto that de device and then broadcast it. So each screen needs a device. And from that device, you can share as many pieces of content as you would like. And you, through your network, can have multiple playlists on one device, or you can share just one piece of content through all those different ones as well, all controlled from one area. So why is this important? Why are visuals important? So the human brain is hardwired for the memorization and for the processing of visuals as opposed to other sources, like audio, for instance. So the human brain processes 90% of its information through visual, through what it sees. And on average, the brain only needs about 13 milliseconds to process an image. So if you've ever been in a Tim Hortons drive through, that's handy because they switch the screens so quickly. It's about 13 milliseconds, but you just need a glimpse to register that information in a lot of cases. So as we all know now with Dina's example of Victoria's Secret before the call, there are screens everywhere. So the more powerful and the more potent your content and your message is, the more chance it has to stand out. So 
unfortunately in this day and age a poster won't do anymore so Justin, how does digital sign i'm sorry you brought up tim hortons do you know how they paid for their digital signage there was an nhl strike and they had lots of money left because they had nowhere to advertise that's what i'm told they did the story is how they paid put all their digital signage up sorry you brought it up so, so i had to bring the up nhl that is the blame for those screens that's now the reason we all every 15 seconds. yes <laughs> yeah they rotate way too fast anyway sorry no worries so uh how can digital signage work specifically for education we have many customers and they're using it in many different ways uh some of the instances that we've seen are very interesting are to build community spirit spread camaraderie share safety messages and support pride and inclusion so this can manifest itself in many ways building community spirit you can share news and feel good updates about other students and their accomplishments uh, through camaraderie, you can spread information about school events and initiatives. Uh, you can share critical safety messages and notices to ensure the student well-being on your campuses. And also you can show support to community groups and pro-inclusivity groups through your screens as well to make sure everyone is welcome in your facilities. So just to talk now a little bit about Stanford. They've been a customer of ours since 2016. They're currently using 49 endpoints and 30 users, and they're looking to expand that to, I believe you said 60 by the end of the year. Currently, they're using over 2000 forms of media, over 175 playlists, and they use digital signage to spotlight key events at their university. So, uh, Justin, welcome to the call. Thank you for joining us today. Uh, could you tell us a little bit about what you do at Stanford? Yes, well, hello everyone. Uh, thank you for having me. My name is Justin and uh, my role at Stanford is I'm a senior communication technologies engineer. Uh, essentially what that means is I'm an AV engineer and one of the roles that I have is being the systems admin for telemetry TV at Stanford School of Medicine. And so uh, that entails various aspects uh, such as providing onboard training uh, to faculty and staff who are using telemetry in the department, uh, as well as uh, being the point of contact for any tickets that we receive for uh, requests for more signage, uh, whether that be uh, requests for more devices for a department or advertisement for uh, different events that we have across campus. And as we'll get into a little bit more, uh, we'll get into detail as far as what that content entails. But essentially, that's my my role with using telemetry TV. Awesome. Thanks, Justin. Yeah, uh, you're sharing with me some of the content that you guys are currently sharing in some of your events. And the one that I would say stood out to me initially was Match Day. Could you tell us a little bit about Match Day? Definitely. Um, so this year, uh, Match Day took place on Friday, March 15th. Um, and essentially, Match Day is when the National Resident Matching Program releases the results to applicants who are seeking residency and fellowship training positions in the United States. And so at exactly 9 a.m. Pacific time on March 15th, um, graduates were anxious to see what the results were in terms of where they matched for uh, their residencies. And so uh, this is a program uh, that originated in the 1950s. And once that envelope is open, Again, the uh, student sees where they're going for residency. And uh, the way we had this set up is it took place at Stanford uh, Lee Cushing building, where the results were shown all at once uh, afterward. And it was really an opportunity for uh, the students to share this experience with their family and friends, everyone who was uh, associated with this moment up to that point. And when using telemetry TV, uh, we shared these results also on all of our screens in the Lee Kashin Center on the first, second, and third floor. And so this really created a feeling of uh, inclusion, like we spoke about earlier, and was an opportunity for everyone to celebrate together with those results. That's awesome. So when it comes to promoting an event like that, uh, what sort of content do you find is the most useful for getting that message out? Sure, uh, I think really it starts with um, the purpose of the event or the experience that we hope to have when it comes to people looking at these signs. Um, as was mentioned also earlier, the idea of just having a static board or a bulletin board um, isn't as effective as using digital signage because of the attention 
that digital signage draws. And so uh, when going into an event like this, we're looking to first uh, publish something that is exciting and interesting to look at. And that can be in the form of either um, one image that rotates in a playlist or perhaps having different zones on a display in which we can have content on one side of the screen, uh, perhaps supplementary material on the other side, and um, a, a header that is really eye-catching. Yeah, so just yeah to explain that, because you can see in this image here, you have your, your main content in the middle with match day, but you also have that bar on the side. So one thing you can do with the digital sign in software is you can separate the screen so you can show multiple pieces of information at once. So that's not just one static image. The schedules would be moving and you can update those on the side as well, right? Exactly. And so yeah. uh, the schedule that we see here on the image uh, is for the schedule for this particular building, Lee Kashin. And those are all the events happening um, on that particular day. And as the day continues, um, the schedule for events happening later on in the day will start to populate as well. And so like you mentioned, it's not just static, but it really is dynamic. And then in addition, with the, the board that says match day 2024, um, after match day, we continue with our normal running playlist, which include videos and other um, flyers that people had requested to show. Yeah, that's awesome. I want to talk to you a bit about video, so I'm glad you brought that up. I understand that you also uh, have multiple events at the School of Medicine, including some grand rounds. Uh, could you tell us a little bit about those keynote events that you guys host and how you promote them? Definitely. So um, here's an example of a, an event taking place on March 22nd. And what will typically happen is uh, a ticket will uh, come to my team, in which case I'll I'll handle the ticket. And uh, what's nice about telemetry TV is that users or people can send content in the form of uh, PDF, PNG, uh, JPEG, PowerPoint, and other forms of files, which uh, not all digital science solutions are able to do. And so it really makes it easy for content to be sent. And then from there, um, we go ahead and advertise uh, this event. Um, if the event ends, in this case, March 22nd, uh, that's when the signage for that particular event will come down. We also have the option to determine how long we want a piece of signage to display uh, before the next uh, sign rotates in. And so these forms of communication have been very valuable because we can deploy it essentially wherever there's a digital sign available. And people that may not have been aware of an event uh, can easily see the event that's taking place, whether they're passing by or they decide to stay in front of the, the board for an extended amount of time. Yeah, and I see you're using a QR code there as well. Uh, how do you utilize the QR codes in your specific case? Do you have uh, sign up forms or would it connect to <clears throat> like a video that you can watch the event after it happened? Good question. So uh, there's a variety of ways in which these QR codes can be used. Uh, really, it is determined by the person who's organizing the event. Uh, but we've seen many examples where the QR code will direct people to the registry um, or the QR code will direct individuals to the website uh, of a department that is hosting an event where they can receive more information that can't necessarily fit all on uh, one board. And this has been a great help, especially um, post pandemic where QR codes, uh, we've seen an explosion of their usage. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, the, the comeback nobody saw coming. If I could just add something to that, is that okay, Max and Justin? Absolutely, please. Yeah, so I just wanted to say, so I've, I've been working in this building for over 14 years. This is a large two by two video wall that we have in the, in the first floor, the ground floor lobby. And before this, we had just computers running like PowerPoint presentations. They were really boring. I didn't, you know, nobody paid much attention to them. When we upgraded to this larger display and, and implemented telemetry to this, I, I walked past this display pretty often going around different buildings around the School of Medicine. And we just see people all the time, just mind blown, just standing there watching videos and the content that Justin creates through the telemetry software it, it's just mind blowing. I, I've had people that we know, local departments, come to us and say, "Hey, oh, wow, this is so great! Thank you for displaying our signs." You know, it's 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 a really it's, it's such a useful case. 
Um, in our scenario, and it could be for any any type of business, just to display information. So uh, this the, the software, the way it functions and rotates through and adding videos, uh, it, it's a it's a really it's a really great thing for us. Yeah, the thing we is have a question on the floor, and you you sort of just answered it. This is a multiple display. Yeah, this is a two by two uh, NEC uh, display wall. There are four, basically four 55 inch commercial grade displays. And we have what another, our question we have was is which too. compute device or how, it, is it quick to answer or should we wait till the end? Is how you're spreading that image over the two displays, the four displays? Um, yeah, this for, for this instance, uh, these displays are, are designed for digital signage and they can work in a video wall. So they all work together. They, they, they wire from one to two to three to four, and then the telemetry box just connects into one of them. And Colin, we can help you with that at Microserver as well if you want to go more in depth. Thanks, guys. Sorry, Max, Perfect. I didn't mean to, to no, no worries I just at all. add that in. Yeah, no worries at all. So the, the last event that I wanted to talk about, then we can go into questions and I'll throw it back to Tina, was uh, you guys also use something called the tech bar. Could you kind of take us through what that is and how that works for you? Sure. Uh, so the tech bar is what uh, school medicine um, community members can use for assistance when it comes to any um, computer needs, or we could think of it essentially as kind of like the uh, genius bar where people can go for assistance, uh, whether through appointment or in some cases walk-ins. And digital signage is used at these tech bars in many ways in which uh, the team members will be uh, on display um, for the digital signage aspect. Uh, the digital signs also provide information regarding best practices in which community members can use or helpful tips while they wait for someone to assist them with their device. And the tech bar is located in four different locations at the School of Medicine, um, some being on main campus, as well as others being on off-site locations. And so just for visibility, again, we use the tech bar uh, by means of digital signage to let people know the hours for the tech bar in different buildings that we have, and just spread awareness that that's also a location that individuals can go to if they need assistance with their um, IT questions or computer issues. Yeah, that's awesome. And uh, I, I find that one pretty unique as well. So I guess my last question to throw back to Dina is, uh, since you are planning on expanding to more screens in the near future, uh, what other ideas do you have for deploying digital signage and what sort of content are you thinking of using as well? Well, the awesome thing about digital signage is really, um, the department kind of determines the direction in which they go and so that can be as simple as uh, just individual slides that rotate or if people want to get more dynamic they can include videos um, there's different apps within telemetry that they can utilize such as a weather app or if they want to uh, import sheets uh, files related to uh, projects that they might be working on and then another case that i found has been really awesome is some departments include uh, dashboards for uh, tickets that they may have. And so this is really nice because everyone at the same time can view the tickets uh, that are in existence for a team, as well as get a better gauge of uh, perhaps areas in which their work can uh, be directed for the benefit of their team, as well as those who they support. And so moving forward with the, um, there's about 10 devices that we are scheduled to deploy this year. Um, we're really excited about the potential that exists by means of uh, collaborating with different departments to fit their needs. Awesome. Thank you so much, Justin. Uh, so, yeah, with that, Dina, if uh, you want to take it back. You over, but, uh, um, awesome. Is it all right if I ask a question right off the bat? Justin, if I'm hearing the model correctly, it's a, I think might be a little different. So you actually take the content from your end users and put it up onto the displays for them, as opposed to a lot of places, the, I'm going to say the AV department that's very technical, they just let them do their updates themselves. Mm -hmm. Did I understand that right? You're doing a lot of the updates in the program? Yes. 
so that's a that's a great point to bring up and thank you for uh, bringing it up actually so it's a little bit of a combination of both um, okay one of the things that i do is i do training for departments and teams um, the goal is to essentially have it to where they are self-sufficient and can uh, deploy their own content without assistance uh, however for certain spaces such as our building Li Kaxing, there isn't necessarily one department that manages that space. It's kind of a okay. an area where various pieces of content can be shared. And so for that location, as well as a few others, I'm the point of contact to uh, deploy slides and whatnot. But if it's just one department, let's say, that is uh, using the signage, then for the most part, training takes place so that they can take care of that themselves. Perfect. Perfect. Thank you. Um, if we'll just go to our next slide and I'll just make sure that again, I can't thank Stanford enough for discussing their usage. I still love that QR code. I learned something new today and I'm going to advertise that to all my customers. Mm -hmm. um, we have myself, Dina Simon, to help. If you have any questions on the microserve side, um, we uh, even though it's not on the BC net contract, any displays or mounting or services, that's the kind of thing we do. Jim Pashek in Alberta. We have, as I said, Sylvain Jacob is here, who is our VP of sales. And you can reach out to any of his microserve account managers to discuss any needs that you have. At this point, is there any other questions? We sure have a lot of brain trust here we can help you with. And did I, I think we had some questions from, oh, I've got, oh, go ahead, Colin, you bet. Do you have, hi it, Colin, do you have digital signage today on your campus? And Colin's here. from. I'll yeah, reveal Valley. just a little bit more here. Hi. Uh, yeah, I'm from the University of Fraser Valley here in British Columbia, Canada. Um, we just did our first round of digital signage deployments. I think I was about, uh, 25 or so that we deployed in our first round and we're going to go ahead and deploy a second round real soon here <clears throat> i was just wondering if you guys have done any uh streaming so local i don't know what you guys do locally if you're doing av over ip or how you guys are bringing content from one part of your university to another part of your university and i'm wondering if you're using telemetry at all to say live stream any kind of like convocation ceremonies or any kind of like larger scale events that take place on campus and how you might schedule those or what kind of feeds or applications you might use to to do that if you are and let's put that out if you don't mind i'm going to twist that and say max or Please. chris would would you mind answering that what just in case stanford isn't doing that maybe you could say what your product does do because i know it does um, so this is Chris here from Telemetry TV, uh, if you guys can hear me. Um, yeah, so Telemetry can. TV does support real-time streaming protocol, both inbound and outbound. Um, I have not seen it in the use case of a, you know, an education environment. One of, our, one of our very large customers actually uses it in the casino and gaming hotel environment to you know, syndicate jackpot wins or horse bet horse racing but they're taking basically an outside third-party feed um using iptv to transform that signal and then re-syndicating it across a virtual endpoint within their environment so um yes we do support both inbound and outbound real-time streaming protocol but that now would be gonna... a very interesting use case to you know live stream a you know convocation ceremony or something like that and have that um syndicated across multiple screens across the campus environment while that main stage is taking place. I, I think that would be really cool. Oh, and Thompson Rivers, there's, uh, do you mind talking, Matthew, or I'll just read this? I'll see if you're going to come on camera. Hi there. I actually have, we have a Vimeo expert to help you if you need help with getting on Vimeo, but go ahead and give your use case. That's exciting. Uh, yeah, we 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 do get requests from different areas around campus for some special events to show them on the screens just to kind of let students know that those events are happening and to, to build school spirit. Um, Convocation is an important one to show students what they're working towards. So we do we do have to use YouTube. We we've, we've tried several times to get Vimeo to work, but it um, 
we, we just have technical challenges, but, but YouTube works great. If, if there's a YouTube live stream, it's very easy to, uh, to hook up. And uh, Matthew, you are using some telemetry players today. Is that right across campus or you, I know you've got some licenses? Yeah, we have about, I think we have just under 60 screens around campus. Um, in, I don't know, like 10, 10 different buildings. Perfect. So we have, and we have, we, we kind of oversee the, the screens and the content here in our marketing and communications department, but we also have about 30 users around campus that have access to their own playlists in telemetry. So they can log in and upload their own, their own content. Thank you. Thanks for participating. No we should problem. have had prizes for good, good questions and comments. Oh, right. But we do have free food as well, once uh -huh. we get to that next next okay. screen. Um, any other? There we go. There's my screen. So if you scan that, that gives you your feedback. Microserve is always looking to what we can do. And this was actually brought to you by um, BCNet as well. This was part of their thought process that we have these kind of events around digital signage. So I thank Devin for thinking of that when we did this original agreement with them. But we're always looking for feedback, what you're looking for, what kind of information. And um, so that's what part of the survey is. And then, of course, you get a gift card for doing so. Did, did I have any other questions or comments? I have a question, um, mm -hmm. and maybe more of a prompt, but um, Dina, what is the adoption process look like for a school that says, "Hey, I'm interested, but I, you know, I want, I don't want to jump in with both feet just yet." Um, is there a proof of concept or um, kind of a try before you buy phase? What does that look like? What have you seen in the education environment as to how people are adopting digital signage? Absolutely, and it's. I could add that there's still a lot of customers that are looking at new digital signage platforms because they want ease of use. So just because you're already on one, there are, it's amazing. Actually, I think you guys told me this and I've seen it as well. I've, I've had more customers switching lately than I've ever had before because they're realizing that they're not all built the same. And um, so that's something that's happening. But at um, reaching out to your microserve first. Oh, sorry. Let me just say, non first BCNet, you can reach out to BCNet and they can get you set up with your license and with a proof of concept. Non BCNet customers, you come directly to microserve. Same thing though, we'll get you set up with a trial. I find that our partners are really good about jumping on and getting in trials. There's lots of support and with the, um, you guys didn't really talk about, but do you want, there's lots of online support and live chat. Can I pass that back to you, Max, to just go over that quickly while you're doing yes. your concept? Yeah, of course. And I was just doing a bit of that in the uh, chat box as well. So I'm, I'm a member of the customer success team. So my role is if you are using our software and you're having any issues at all we have uh, multiple documentation with help videos but also when you're in the user interface you'll see a chat box and so when you message into that within three minutes a member of our team might be me will reach out and we'll begin helping you with your issue so uh it's not a set it and forget it sort of thing if there's any issues or anything you'd like to see grow kind of like what i mentioned at the beginning where we're very much voice of the customer we're here to help you and to uh work with you and support you through any issues you might be having and, and briefly sorry i just wanted to echo what max had said in terms of the responsiveness um with chat with telemetry and tv it's it's so nice because we can, well, in my experience, if I'm having difficulty with um, something when using telemetry, I'll send a chat and within a few minutes, someone gets back to me. And there's also documentation like Max mentioned, which is uh, very straightforward and easy to understand. And so it creates a sense of uh, not being alone when navigating the platform, which is really awesome for a user to experience. 
And if you ever want more than what the BC Net contract has, we can also set up uh, private training and extra training for you as well. If there's not any other questions, well, thank you all again. Thank you, Stanford, so much for sharing your experience with us. And anyone, please reach out to us if you have any questions or if you'd like to see what we can do um, around your AB needs. Thanks, Sil. He knew how nervous I was. Thanks, <laughs> you did well, Dina. Thank you. Thank you for your feedback. It's all the